Hey everyone! In this video, I'll show you a few more things in Camtasia that you can do to improve the overall quality of your video. I'll also show you how you can look for and fix any mistakes that you might find, because let's face it, none of us is perfect at this, and we're teachers, not professional video editors. So don't worry if your video isn't perfect, the goal here is merely to improve it. Okay, let's get to work. Okay, so here I'm going to go through the last part, part four of the video editing guide that I wrote for you all. And what we'll do in this video is outlined here, but there's a lot more you can do with Camtasia as well. And I encourage you to check out the many online tutorials that are available for various features of Camtasia. But the things we'll do are we'll trim the unneeded parts of the video, we'll overlay my writing over my voice. So at the top of my videos, I like to ask a couple of questions and say them at the same time. So I'll show you how to do that. You can also find and fix any mistakes at this point, and we'll continue to clean up the audio a little bit and add some additional features like transitions, fade in, fade out, that kind of thing. Now the next step in the process is to resize the video if necessary. And this we can do using the canvas of Camtasia. So you want to make sure that the overall shape and dimensions of each part of your video are the same, or else you'll have some black bars on the side. So in Camtasia, to determine where the outlines of your video that are going to actually show up are, click on the canvas like this, and that outline in white that you can see at the edges of the video, that's the outline of the video itself. Okay, now the talking head looks good because the entire video is taking up the entire frame. Okay, you can see everything in white is actually part of the video. Everything inside those white lines is actually part of the video. Now if we go forward a little bit, it looks like for some reason when I imported my screencast, Camtasia is reading it as smaller than it should be. So if I were to leave this like this, when I exported my video, there would be areas of black around the actual part of the video. So as long as your aspect ratio or the shape of the square of your video is the same, you can simply fix this by right clicking on your canvas and going to scale and select scale to fit and it will now take up the whole frame. Now, if the dimensions of the video that you're putting in here that you want to match other parts of the video are different, then you can use the crop feature here and drag around parts of the video to include or exclude them in what will be viewed as the final video. So it may take some playing around with that to get comfortable with it, but you do want to avoid those black bars around your video because that's just wasted space. And let's make sure that my talking head at the end of the video is also taking up the entire screen, and it looks like it is, so I'm happy with that. Okay, let's see what's next. At this point, I'm going to show you how to make things appear faster using the clip speed option in Camtasia, and that's how I make my questions that I ask in my videos appear at the same time as I say them, because of course I can speak much faster than I write, so I have to speed up the writing to match my speech. So let's do that in Camtasia. So first I have to go back towards the beginning of my video and figure out at what point in the video those questions are actually appearing. So looks like they're appearing right about here. So you can see them appear right at the top of the screen here. As I proceed along in the video, they start to appear. Now if I just let this play, you can see that my writing is quite slow and I wouldn't want to make my students sit through that. So I want to speed this up 
And I also have to locate the point where I'm actually saying these questions. So I think it might be somewhere around here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. I usually say the questions right before or after I write them. So let's see here. How does double fertilization occur? And what are the functions of the fertilized cells in seed development? Okay, so this right here is the part where I'm actually saying these questions, and this over here is the part where I'm actually writing them. So what I have to do is overlay this part here with the writing of the questions over this part here where I'm saying the questions and also at the same time speed up the part of the video where the questions are appearing. So the first step in doing that is what I like to do anyway is zoom in a little bit around the audio part of this and I'm going to just separate using this feature right here, the split feature, separate the parts of the audio and that will just tell me where my speech and where I'm starting to say these questions begins, right? So it's just a way of, of marking out uh, where that speech starts for me. Now I'm going to zoom out a little bit and then I'm going to do the same thing with the video of me actually writing these questions within Explain Everything. So let's see where that starts. It looks like it starts about here. So I'm going to go a little bit to the left just to give myself some extra room. And keep in mind that track two is the audio track. Track one down here is the video track. So this is the track where these questions are actually appearing in the video. So if I want to mess with where my questions are appearing, I'm going to split my video track at this point, right before those questions start appearing. And then I'm going to go to the point where my questions stop appearing, right about there. And once again, split my video. So now I can move this part of my video around by itself and I'm going to drag it right up here into track three so I can overlay this part of the video with the audio where I'm actually saying those questions, okay? Now, if I were to play this, how does double fertilization occur? And what are the... So you can see that my questions are appearing far too slow to keep up with the speech. So to fix that, to make this part of my video appear faster, I'm going to use the feature called Clip Speed. And to add a clip speed to this part of a video, I'm going to right click and go to Add Clip Speed. And that'll appear in the properties to the right down here where it says Clip Speed. And the way I like to do this is just click on the speed and just use the up arrow to speed it up to approximately where that whole part of the video matches the part of the audio where I'm saying those questions. So maybe somewhere like that. And then I kind of fine tune it from there. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so we can get a better picture of this. Okay. And I'm just going to play that and see what it looks like and then fix it from there. How does double fertilization occur? And what are the functions of the fertilized cells in seed development? Okay, now that's looking a little choppy right now, and that happens sometimes in Camtasia, but the final video will be much more smooth than that. So I'm going to save at this point. Okay, and it looks like the clip speed of my video part is just a little bit slow, so I'm going to increase the speed a little bit more. And one way you can do this is just to put your playhead at the end of the last word, which is development, which is right here. So I'm going to highlight that and play it for you. Development. Right. And you can just make the end of that word, the end of that audio signal there for development, match up with when the word development is said. 
So it actually looks like it kind of uh, matches up pretty well right now. Okay, this is the word development that's about to appear. So let's see how it looks now. How does double fertilization occur? And what are the functions of the fertilized cells in seed development? Okay, so once again, it looks pretty choppy right now, but it'll look a lot smoother in the final video after you export it as a .movie file or a .mp4 file. So I think that looks pretty good for now. And that is how you make your writing keep up with your speech using the clip speed feature. Now I don't recommend using this too, too much. I prefer to teach with diagrams and labels and things moving around on the screen and things like that. I just feel like it's more engaging, but this is also a nice way to further engage your viewers with any writing that you're going to have appear on the screen. Okay, let's see what's next in our guide. Next, I'm going to trim just the unneeded parts of my video towards the end and also within the video itself, but you don't want to trim them too much. I see this a lot in educational videos. The pace of the speaking is just far too fast. You do need to leave some time between sentences for your students to think about and start to understand what's happening on the screen and what you're saying. So don't be afraid to leave those pauses in your video just like you would normally do in your classroom. So let's start by trimming just the unneeded parts of this video. And you'll certainly see these at the beginning and uh, end of your talking heads, um, but you do wanna leave some extra space here. So I try to leave about um, you know three to four seconds before I start talking because I'm going to use some uh, fading in and fading out later on. But for now, let's just see how much time is here. Now this is five seconds. So it looks like there already is three or three or so seconds at the beginning of this video. So I'm not going to cut anything off there. However, it looks like there is, oh, and there's some empty space between these two videos because I moved this one to the right. There is a lot of just empty space between my talking head and when I begin talking for my screencast. So I'm going to delete a bunch of that. And let's see, it looks like there's five seconds from here to here. So I'm gonna leave three seconds or so before I start talking in my screencast, but everything before that, I'm going to delete. Just so my students don't have to wait so long to see what's in the screencast. Okay, and now I'm going to play over that transition just to see what it looks like. And in this video, we'll have two questions. Hey everyone, in the last few video. Okay. Okay, so I think that looks okay. Um, there is going to be some extra time taken up here with the transition that I'll use later just to fade out and a fade in. So I am going to leave some extra space there. Um, also, the reason that I said, hey everyone again here is because I didn't originally have a talking head for uh, the beginning of this video because it was just part of another video series and I had a talking head at the beginning of the series and at the end of it. So maybe I wanna actually delete that part of this video because it doesn't quite fit. So let me see what I say here. Hey everyone, in the last few videos, you saw how the male gametophyte, pollen, is produced in the anther. Hey everyone. Okay, so I think I'm just going to see what I say next. And how the female gametophyte, the egg sac, is produced within the ovule. The pollen grain. Okay, so I think I'm just going to delete everything before here just so it flows a little better because I now have a talking head introduction to this video and I didn't before. So to cut things out of the video, and you're going to be doing this a lot, um, especially when it comes to cleaning up your audio, there's a couple of ways to do this. One is you can right click and ripple delete range, and it will delete everything in here and bring this part of the video over to the playhead, okay? But there's also a nice shortcut for this, and I don't know what it is for a PC, but for a Mac, 
it's shift command X. So if I hit shift command, hold them all down and hit X, then I'll cut out that region of the video. So I do that a lot, so it's just a pretty nice shortcut to use, so I don't have to click so much on the screen. Okay, now let's see if there are any other areas I need to trim. And I'm gonna start with the end of the video, actually, just to make sure that the transition between the end of the screencast and the beginning of my talking head is smooth as well. So I'll play that part of it. And understand the functions of the various cells and tissues. Okay. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good, actually, but normally there will be a lot of space between the end of the screencast and the beginning of your talking head. So if there is, just remember to cut that space out so your students don't have to wait too long between parts of your video. And let's see what the end of the video looks like. Let's see if I have any extra space I need to trim at the end. So I will see you all then. Okay, so I think I'm only going to leave three or so seconds at the end, so I'm just gonna clip the rest of this here off of the end of the video. And once again, the shortcut I'm using is Shift, Command, or probably Control for PC, and X. Okay, and I'll save. Okay, and going back to the beginning of the video, you can do that throughout your entire video. You can see if there are pauses that are too long and take those out. For example, it looks like there's a pretty long pause here. So I'm gonna zoom out and just see where that is. Okay, oh, and that's because I, I cut out and sped up the part of the video where I was writing my question. So I'm gonna make sure to delete that part as well. Okay, here's where I finish my questions. In seed development. Okay, and I wanna make sure that I keep that question on the screen. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Okay, and then cut all of this out because I want to get to the next section of my video. So I'm gonna cut all this, and now I'll take a look at how that transition looks. In seed development. The first step in... Okay, so I think that's pretty good. I'm fine with the three or four second pause there because it allows the students to think about what these questions are and think about what they'll be learning in this video. So you can go through the entire video and cut out any pauses that you think are too long. Now, I'm not going to do that here, just in the interest of time, but you can do that for your video. Okay, so let's see what's next here. Okay, uh, record over any mistakes if necessary. So for this, I just recommend that um, you listen to the entire thing in Camtasia and just watch the video and make sure that there aren't any egregious mistakes that you really need to fix. And if there are, you can just go back into your original location where you recorded in and set your microphone up the same exact way and just record the audio that you want to use to substitute for the audio where you made your mistake. And to do that, all you would do is record a new audio clip, place it in the media bin, and then place that audio clip over the part of your audio where you made your mistake, and then just delete the part of your audio with the mistake in it, and then insert the part of your audio that you want to replace it. So Camtasia makes that pretty easy. Although you do wanna make sure that the pitch and the tone of your voice is the same as the rest of your recording. Okay, so let's see what's next. Okay, now this next step is kind of optional, but it can also kind of take a while, uh, depending on how detailed you wanna be about it. So in this part, I'm going to remove kind of any mouth sounds or clicks or just any sort of rogue uh, sounds in the video that kind of made it into the video at this point. So I'm just going to listen to some of my video and see if I can take some of that out just to make my video sound better. So I'll start at right about here. And I'll zoom in a little bit. Now for this part, 
I recommend having your volume all the way up because it'll be a lot easier to hear those kind of clicks and mouth sounds. Has seven cells, but in this video, we're mainly concerned with the central cell and the egg cell. Okay, so you see that I probably swallowed or something at that point, or maybe, you know, drank some water. So that part right there, I want to get rid of that, but I don't want to completely cut this area out of the video because then the pacing would be off, right? Then I would be kind of talking too fast. I want that pause there, but I just want to remove that sort of messed up sound. So to do that, once again, I can right click and click silence audio, and that will remove any part any sound in that region selected by the playhead, okay? And you can see that that region of the sound is now muted. So let's see what it sounds like now. And the egg cell. The central cell nucleus is affected. Okay, sounds pretty good. Now, I don't recommend doing too much of this kind of thing if you have a lot of background in your recording because if you do and you silence part of the audio the background noise will also go away and that'll be pretty conspicuous in your video so just be aware of that this is exactly why it's nice to have your background noise at zero this is why i do that background subtraction so when i do something like this it's not so conspicuous as to have no noise at all in other words when i mute a part of the video, it's going to have the same volume as other parts of the video where I'm not speaking. So let's continue doing this for a little bit. Let's zoom in a little bit. And the egg cell nucleus is haploid. In this video, we'll finish up our discussion of plant reproduction by examining double fertilization and seed development, we'll be addressing two questions. How does double fertil... Okay, so I think that part of the video is fine. Looks like there might be some noise here, so let's check that out. by the proteins present in the vegetative cell. Yep, looks like there's some noise there, so I'm going to silence that as well. Okay, and if you don't want to completely silence your audio, for example, if you didn't do background subtraction and you do want to have a little bit of background just to make everything consistent, you can even bring this up if you want to so that, so that there's not complete silence at this point but the noises that you made that you don't want to be there are also not quite as loud. So that's kind of a compromise that you can do. Okay, so let's see what's next in our guide. Okay, so I like to add credits at the end of my videos, and the main reason for that is to allow other people to share my video. So I am licensing all of these videos under a Creative Commons by attribution share alike license. And so if you're viewing them and you want to share them, feel free. So I have my credits in a separate folder within my double fertilization video, and it's right here. And I have the credits in just another Camtasia project. So I'm going to open that up. And I'll just play this for you, just so you can see what it's like. Okay, so just 30 seconds or so, and the music I just found from an open source um, music clip website. 
and I thought it sounded nice, so I just put it over my credits. You can, of course, put whatever sound you want over your credits if you decide to do them. Now, to add my credits to the end of my video, all I have to do is just copy everything here, hit Command C or Copy. I'll minimize this, go to the end of my video, make sure my playhead is at the end of the video, and I'm going to right click here and paste at media playhead, or paste media at playhead. Okay, and you can see that the credits are now right after my talking head outro. Now you also may notice that this is too small, so I'm going to go over here, and this sometimes happens when Camtasia makes something smaller than it should. I'm just going to right click here, go to scale and scale to fit. And I have a couple of different video clips within these credits, so I have to do this multiple times, I think. Nope, it looks good actually. So let's go back a little bit and just make sure that the transition looks good from my talking head to my credits. So I will see you all then. Okay. So you might have noticed that within my credits, I have these transitions. It's a fade out and then a fade in. And I think that's kind of nice. Um, just makes the transition between different video clips a bit less harsh. So I think I'm gonna add one right here as well, between the end of my talking head and the beginning of my credits. So the transitions in Camtasia in the menu is this tab right here, this box, which is partially dark and partially light. So I'm gonna click that, and there's all sorts of uh, transitions here that you can use. Um, the one that I like to use is the fade through black. So I'm just gonna drag that down between my two video clips, and it will automatically place a transition there. And you can even change the duration of this transition. I like it to be about three minutes total, a minute and a half fading out and a minute, or rather, excuse me, um, three seconds total, a second and a half fading out and a second and a half fading in. So let's see what it looks like now. So I will see you all then. Okay, much better. And I like to use these transitions at other parts of the video where I have transitions between video clips. So I'm going to place a fade in right at the beginning of my first talking head. And I want that to be about a second and a half. So let's see how that looks. Hey everyone. In the okay, I think that looks pretty good. And I also want to transition between this talking head and the beginning of my screencast. So I'm going to put one there as well. And I'm gonna make this one a little shorter actually because I didn't leave as much space as I probably should have between the end of this talking head and where I begin talking again on my screencast. So let's see how that looks. Two questions. The pollen grain. Okay, I think that looks okay. It's not perfect, but I'll live with that. Okay, so let's see what's next in our guide here. We've added transitions, we've added the credits to the end, and then you can also add any other effects or callouts or, or clip speed effects that you want. And you can get pretty creative here, but this kind of thing can be pretty time consuming. So I encourage you to kind of play around with Camtasia, view some more tutorials on YouTube, there are plenty of them, to find out what else you can do with this program. Okay, now at this point, once you've finished editing your entire video and you're happy with the quality of the video and the audio, you can export the entire thing as either an MP4 or a .mov video file. And you'll need to do this if you want to share it on something like YouTube or really post it on any website. So to export your video, you're going to go to Share and Local File and I'm going to make sure that this video is going to go into my double fertilization video folder and that's exactly where I want it. So right here. And I'm going to name this double fertilization final. 
just to tell myself that this is the, the final video clip. And I'm not going to hit export because it takes a really long time to process this video and export it. It might take as long as an hour or two, depending on how long your video is. So once you do hit export, Camtasia will create that video file that you can now share with your students. Okay, so at this point, go through part four of the guide that you saw before, and you can find that below this video, and finish up editing your own video. Now, video editing can be a little frustrating, but it can also be kind of fun and satisfying once you get the final product. So do your best to stick with it, and don't worry if you make a bunch of mistakes initially. You'll get the hang of it. Now, in the next video, I'll show you how you can start a YouTube channel so your students and maybe even other people can find your videos. See you then.